majority of the inhabitants of Isiolo struggle to fight it. There are those who have conquered the environment and worked the land for survival. This is Kina in Isiolo. Five years ago, a group of 25 locals came together to till this land and haven't looked back since. The land yields plenty and hunger doesn't touch them anymore. The right intervention for this community is not agriculture. Crop production, that is, no. With this community, the most important thing is restoration of rangelands. Nicholas Lesokoyo's farm in Oldoniro sits like a breath of fresh air. When all surrounding areas are dry and hot, it is cool and green here. It has taken Lesokoyo 20 years to rehabilitate the land and build his drought resilience. I opted for plant and controlled grazing. Ndiyo unawana sasa niko na inyasi hapa. Yani ni meakikisha kwa mba manana ya carrying capacity ni meobserves, ni mekua observed sana. Ni meaka paddocks. So, ngombe ama mbusi wakikula kwa hii paddock wana move to the other one. So, mimi sasa tuseme kwa kama kwa hii ukame mimi sejaathirika. His land is a little more than 50 acres and he says limiting the size of his herd has helped keep his livestock alive. You know, when I talk of 50 acres, it means that I'm supposed to keep not more than five cows in this farm. Only five? Only five, strictly. At any given moment? At any given moment. Ten acres for one cow. It means that throughout the year, or even if there is any drought, there is no time when, I can drive, when those animals can be driven out of this place. Now Lesokoyo spends his time teaching his neighbors how to survive drought through restoration of degraded lands. What I wanted the community to learn from me first and foremost is to replicate what I have done. They, <clears throat> one, opt for plant and controlled grazing. And in their rangelands, they have to conserve so that during times of hardships, they have where to get assistance from. But when they just graze in a manner that it is not controlled or planned, then that is what contributes to the current problem now they are facing. Through intervention with the government, yes, it is possible. Because I'm a local from this area. Look at what I've done. If all those organizations, county, if the, all those organizations come together, isn't it, pull their resources in one place, geared towards actually seeing to it that things will not be as usual. At least, I'm quite certain that there will be some, that, that, it, it, that there's positiveness in whatever undertaking they will be involved in, especially restoration of pastoral lands. That video is just an example of what some of the communities here in Isiolo are doing to build their resilience to drought, which is one of the impacts of climate change that they face. There are those who are engaged in irrigated agriculture, and there are those who are working with the land itself and restoring the ecosystem. So to put this conversation into perspective and also talk about what else Isiolo is doing besides just irrigated agriculture and uh, what Mzele Sokoyo there is doing in Oldoniro, restoring his landscape, I'd like to introduce my panel of experts. Um, um, right next to me is Omar Abdullahi, who is representing the National Drought Management Authority, and he is the coordinator based in this town, Isiolo County. And next to him, we have Dr. Zainab Dida, who is representing the county government of Isiolo, and Zainab is the chief officer for environment and climate change resilience in this county. Next to Dr. Dida, we have Grace Lolim. Grace is regional coordinator in the northern east, northeastern region, and she represents an organization known as Kenya Platform on Climate Governance, also known as KPCG. Uh, thank you for honoring us with your presence. And last but not least, representing the young people in this conversation, we have Timothy Muraithi, who represents an organization called EcoVista, and he's the chairman of that um, organization, and he has done quite a bit of work on climate advocacy. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.
this is one of the most successfully gender balanced panels we've ever had. <laughs> Usually we don't get the gender balance very well and I'm glad that you all honored our, our call to join this conversation. So we've heard from the video what the two farmers in this county have said about how they are dealing with drought. We've heard about the irrigated agriculture and we've heard about the ecosystem restoration. So I'd like to start with you, Dr. Dida. What is the situation looking like on the ground in Isiolo County? Thank you very much for having us, uh, Zainab. Um, so the situation in Isiolo County, basically, um, when I took over the department last year, early last year, we hit the ground running with the, uh, actually uh, uh, starting the participatory climate risk assessment. Mm. That is part of the Ploka project. Mm. And in that way, we went from ward to ward. We have 10 wards in our county. And in the, uh, from that report that was derived from this PCRA exercise, we were able to come up with uh, ward-based issues related to climate uh, uh, action. So in this case, um, the, our uh, report was compiled and uh, we came up with a five-year county climate action plan that we broke down into different wards, by the, which are tailor-made for each ward. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, based on that, we broke it down further into the annual climate action plan, mm -hmm. which we plan to embark on very soon. Um, we've already started, done most of the policy work and the groundwork for that. Uh, so the next step is actually to, we are waiting for the funds, for the grant, mm -hmm. and uh, we hit the ground running in the implementing some of these projects, mm -hmm. which are locally led. W which are some of the um, projects you're seeing? Because to implement Flocka, you need to involve the community. You need to listen to them and they need to tell you what their climate needs are. So from based on the plans that you've done, what are the needs that are standing out to you? So basically, there were majorly three pronged. I could put it as uh, water issues. We know it came out of the, one of the worst droughts in the last 40 years. 60% of our livestock was wiped out. 80% of Isiolo residents as a county rely lively, their livelihood. They uh, entirely rely on livestock production. So uh, the number one thing would be, first of all, to provide them with water sources that will curb the issues that related to the drought during um, an impending drought that we expect in the future. Mm -hmm. Climate change is here with us. It's here to stay. So we need to be prepared. So, so one of the adaptation measures that we have in place is, first of all, a very large uh, dam is going to be, uh, has already been, uh, uh, the groundwork has started. The governor, uh, our excellency, Governor Abdi Ibrahim, has uh, recently co commissioned the, begin the uh, groundwork for its construction. So it's going to take care of a lot of, uh, it's around, around 50,000 metric tons of water, mm. whereby it's going to provide water for the local communities. This is the Crocodile Joe Dam. And at the same time, provide hydroelectric power to light up Pisiolo. Yeah. So apart from that, we also have boreholes, water pans, and uh, other, um, maybe restoration of springs that can be done. Okay. So the biggest need is water. The need, the biggest need is water. I'm, I'm, I'm pressed for time, I know, yeah. but other issues uh, that we can also handle in, in relation to livestock and agriculture. Okay. Yeah. So now I'd like to bring in uh, Omar from NDMS perspective. The work you do largely responds to the drought emergency. Why are we still in a drought emergency all these years later post-independence? Thank you, Zainab, uh, for having me and also my fellow panelists. Um, uh, climate change is uh, here with us and is one of the greatest, actually, threats to humanity. And uh, drought is one of the major, uh, uh, actually, uh, element of uh, the current uh, climate change. Mm. Others been heat waves and floods, which have, we have experienced recently, and uh, other phenomena which actually are threatening uh, the lives and livelihoods of our communities. Uh, mm -hmm. As a natural drought management, we are looking this one from a broader perspective, that uh, one of the major issues that if we address uh, can resolve a lot of things is investment in the foundation for development. Mm -hmm. I repeat that, investment in the foundation for development. What has been seen over time is that the average pastoralist person is four times more vulnerable mm -hmm. than uh, the farming community. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, that's where you find now uh, three or four times higher malnutrition, three times higher losses of uh, assets, uh, including livestock, which uh, my colleague said about 60% was wiped out, uh, higher level of uh, food and nutrition insecurity. Mm -hmm. So we are, as NDMA, we are approaching this uh, from, uh, from different pillar approach, uh, bringing together and coordinating with all uh, sectors, and one of them is actually uh, what is called uh, building sustainable li livelihoods. Mm. Uh, the other one is actually investing in human capital, which is also we saw it, we thought it wise that if uh, skills are developed and technologies are actually uh, skill transfer is done uh, through technologies, then there's that possibility that people will grow uh, economically much faster and become resilient. The other area where we are focusing on is actually uh, drought risk management, which is our core area. And uh, other one is actually the investment in sustainable infrastructure, mm. which is also a key element. Um, and uh, uh, we thought it was that most of this infrastructure, infrastructure that we invest in, whether it's a road or, or, or what you call a bridge or whatever we are doing, mm. it has to be climate proof infrastructure. Mm. Uh, so that when uh, the rain comes, that bridge is not washed away and then people cannot access uh, the market. Mm. So these are the perspectives through which we are looking. And uh, as NDMA, we are also um, doing what is called uh, actually vulnerability assessment, mm. uh, capacity building of communities so through community managed disaster risk reduction, uh, working with them and you know working with them and building uh, community action plans mm. that they can actually leverage on and uh, you know develop their resilience capacities. Mm. So these are some of the uh, areas where we are focusing on. As, so the, as the work you do therefore supports the county's uh, yeah. implementation of the locally led adaptation yes, projects. Yes, we, we work with the, the county government through its different sectors. It has, we call live rural sectors, mm. agriculture, livestock, education, uh, environment, and then we also work with all the development partners that work in Solo, and we coordinate and we have that platform called the uh, county steering group. group. Mm which are also our platform for, for sharing knowledge and learning and planning together, co-creating, co-implementation, mm. and doing you know, provision of services and opportunities for the communities. Okay. Uh, Grace, you mentioned to me that you were born and raised in Isiolo County. Therefore, you have first-hand experience of how you've seen climate uh, affect this community from the time you were born until now you're an adult, and now you're involved in climate advocacy. How have you seen that uh, transformation? Yeah, uh, I can say that climate change is real. Uh, because when I was a child, uh, we used to have floods. Uh, we had a river which has never dried up. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to have, uh, we can just collect firewood within the neighborhood. And uh, we can have some harvest of uh, food, even if the other parts of the country is there is famine. Uh, in Isiolo, we never realized because there was plenty of food. We had the rivers, two rivers in Isiolo, which were not, uh, never dried up, but nowadays they are seasonal. Uh, we've been uh, seeing people of late uh, turning into Chakobani uh, because the rivers have dried up, so they had to have another alternative livelihood. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been seeing also, because we are pastoralists, we had a lot of herd of cattle. And if you can even step to a neighbor's home and you can be given milk without even buying it. So it was a commodity which can be shared as a pastoralist community. They can share their commodity. If they can slaughter an animal, yeah, you can all eat as a community. But nowadays, uh, it's a commodity that is very expensive. Uh, if you have to get milk, you have to buy with a lot of money. And sometimes you cannot even get it. Uh, we used to have fruits. You can just go to your neighbor and get some fruits, uh, mangoes, uh, oranges, but nowadays you cannot get them because of climate. That also indicates that there is cli climate change is real. Mm. Uh, uh, because we have seen climate change and we have done a focus on climate change, uh, one, within our personal communities, uh, we believe that climate change is a good sent thing. So we'll it just be waiting. Yeah. It's a good sent thing. Uh, and we'll, because we are in Isiolo, we believe that we have been fighting. We've shed blood, so this is a punishment from God. Our, our so, yes, so yeah. we'll be waiting for God to, uh, to, to get it away from us, or we just pray, we kneel down and pray to God. But that is not uh, the, re the reality. Mm -hmm. The reality is that we have to take action, 
because climate change is real and it is here with us. Mm. Uh, maybe in Kuliza to Jambomoja, Koyomi Akayoto Meshi in this county, what would you say are the biggest drivers of climate change? Uh, one, uh, maybe our pastoralism way of life, mm. uh, because we have a lot of animals. Tunakua wafugadi, wakua na ngombe nyingi sana. Na pia, tunakata maka kwa wingi, kwa sababu sa zingine inakua alternative livelihood. So tunamaliza miti, uh, tunakua na yu ufugadi mingi. Uh, na sa zingine, unapata kuamba pia uh, katika zile hali ya kujiingisha katika uh, ukulima, tu pia tunachukua maji. So tunafanya muto, tunakata miti kwa muto mpaka uh, maji inakuwa wazi na evaporation inakuwa, inakuwa juu. Mm -hmm. Kwa hivyo mm -hmm. ni vitu ambavyo watu wanafanya wenyewe. Ni vitu wanatumia. ambayo watu wenyewe wamefanya na mm -hmm. wao wenyewe ndio wamechangia. Mm -hmm. Ndiyo. Mm -hmm. Now, now to bring in the youth perspective, Timothy, wewe ni kijana. Na young people in this climate space like to lay the blame squarely on the older generation. Saying we are in this problem kwa sababu yenu. Sisi kama vijana, sisi ndo tume, tunaachwa na yo burden. Do you think nyinyi kama vijana also are part to blame? Uh, thank you so much, Zainab, for this opportunity. Uh, talking on the behalf of young people, uh, I think we, we play a very important part in this fight uh, against climate change. Mm. So we cannot put the blame wholly on the government or other partners, but rather what can we do to play the integral part in making sure that we educate our communities on matters climate change mm. and take uh, the first uh, initiative in raising awareness and raising the sense of urgency on this matter. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Now, what are some of the things that the young people that you work with are doing to help solve this climate problem? Okay. Uh, I have had a chance to work with very many young people in Isolo. Uh, I lead a, a social movement that goes by the name EcoVista. We have partnered with a lot of partners in mentorship, trainings, workshops. Also, we have seen a lot of young people getting involved in creative ways of uh, raising awareness and advocacy. We have youth in music. Watu wanatunga nyimbu kuisiolo za ku... Mbambe wanachangia degradation na eventually climate change. Na kwa hiyo video ambao tulicheza, uyule kulima lesokoyo, anaonelea kuwa kupunguza mifugo ni bora. Shamba yake ni eka hamsini, lakini anangumbu watano piki yake. At any given point, his farm kwa boma kona five only. Do you think that to kambia wafugaji wapunguze mifugo woni ka utapigwa mawe? Uh, kwangu ninaona kwamba itakuwa jambo bora kupunguza okay. mifugo kwa sababu pia imechangia mambo ya climate change. Mm. Uh, tukipunguza mifugo pia tuwe na mifugo ambayo inaweza kutupatia mapato. Mm. Kwa sababu naweza punguza zile mifugo yangu ambayo hata iwezi kanilipia school fees. Mm. Hata moja ukiuza iwezi kulipa school fees. Lakini ni kuwe na zile um, ngombe ambazo zimekuwa modernized. Mm. Nineza kamua na nipeleke ngombe ni uze, ni maziwa ni uze. Na pia nikipeleka ile ngombe uh, kuenda maybe KMC ni, niende ni ni uze ni kwa sababu ya nyama niweze kupata pesa ambaye inaweza kunisaidia. Una ngombe wangapi wewe? Uh, mimi nilikuwa na ngombe lakini iliisha. Sasa nimerudi nimekuwa mkulima. Ni ilisha kwa sababu ya drought. Kwa sababu drought. ya ukame. Ah, ah. Ya kwa sababu ya ukame na nikaona asara sana. Hmm. Na kwa sababu ngaje mimi siku kuwa mzaliwa mfugaji. Baba yangu alikuwa mkulima. Hmm. Lakini kwa sababu pia ninaishi nikiwa pati ya ufugaji. Ninaona kwamba ile ni pride. Na mimi pia nikaweza kuweka ngombe. Hmm. Na wakati wa ukame hata ikisemekana kwamba muze kwa sababu ukame imekuja. Ninaona tulabda inaesa kusafaibu. Mm. Ninaendelea mpaka ninaanza kuona moja kwa moja ikikufa tu. Kutoka hapo nikasema hai ni melan, sasa mm. wacha nikuwe mkulima mm. na niwe pia na, uh, na mapato tofauti. Na yale, yani nisije kuweka uh, maya yangu moja kwa kikapu moja. Ah. Maya yangu yote kwa kikapu moja. Okay. Uh, Dr. Dida, umemusikia Grace na umemusikia Mureithi pale kuzungumza kwa mambo ya vijana. From a county perspective, is telling pastoralists to destock or to reduce their livestock part of the solution? Absolutely. It's part of the issue because, as I mentioned earlier, 
uh, we are um, entirely dependent as a county. 80% of Isiolo residents. Uh, eco economic livelihood is basically livestock um, production. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that uh, what the local um, uh, partners and the county government has been working hand in hand with uh, is to change the mindset of our people, to shift the, the mindset from more of livestock production towards the direction of agribusiness. Uh, in this case, maybe crop farming of drought-resistant crops and which they can use it for, uh, to sell and uh, get some income. Uh, there's also been other forms of uh, interventions that the community has been trained on and there's been a lot of success stories on the ground. Things like bee, bee farming has uh, actually been taken off and it has worked in various wards in the county alongside with poultry farming. They've even ventured, like in Marti, they've ventured in uh, fish farming from a pond. Obviously, we don't have lakes in Siolo, but from a pond. And this is an alternative source of protein uh, with a very rich omega-3 and all that. Eh? So you explain this to the community that it's a, an alternative source of food, one, and also an econo economic income. So poultry farming is also another thing. They can sell the chicken, they can sell the eggs, at, uh, uh, and, and the county has been supporting with this, some of this, and some of the local partners that have heavily impacted these projects are like E4 Impact, and they've been very successful on the ground. And are you receiving any resistance with these attempts to change the mindset? Not at all. Mm -hmm. What they want is the commitment and the goodwill, which is there from our county, mm -hmm. and uh, we are working hand in hand in synergy with the local partners. And the community is actually surprisingly receiving it very well. What they were lacking is a roadmap and a guide. Mm. And you know that um, inducing them to have a shift of mindset, which is happening now on the ground. And they are taking it very positively. Mm. OK. Uh, Omar, um, looking back again, the drought resilience work that you do, how have you seen, how would you determine success in that work? What needs to happen in order for you to say this has been successful? We have built, successfully built the resilience of this community. Yeah, actually, uh, everything starts from uh, baseline assessment of every project mm. or investment and, or intervention that has been undertaken uh, by the drought resilience actors on the ground, mm. uh, including our partners. Um, uh, we usually establish the baseline whereby the community is maybe at a certain level of vulnerability or well-being. And they after, after we do undertake maybe a given intervention, we see the, the, how, how uh, far they have gone uh, through the journey in terms of becoming uh, resilient to the vagaries of uh, climate change. Um, it is uh, important to actually uh, remember that everything starts uh, with the action planning uh, and also early warning. Uh, when we provide, actually, uh, translate climatic data into a useful information for community action planning, we come with, the, you know, through the communities, they come with a number of programs. They say that they say if this number of issues are attended to, we'll be somewhere better than where we are. Mm. So these things now, they, it's not even about their livelihood sometimes and the asset they have. It could be even maybe a, te a telecommunication must, for example, mm. to help them access Mbesa. Mm. It could be a road issue. It could be a bridge somewhere which can help them access the next market out there. It could be issue of addressing conflict. So uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, issue of resilience building requires a multifaceted approach, approach from different direction, and uh, so that uh, one, does not, uh, one area of investment does not undermine the other. So we, we give it that holistic approach, uh, provide the requisite uh, data and uh, early warning, and also uh, plan together, and thereafter undertake maybe studies and assessment to see the impact that they have uh, uh, gone through and, uh, and also support them through and work with them through the journey of sustainable livelihoods. Are there, uh, kuna same zozo temba zone is a same at Tulienda Merti, Tukafanya Hivi, Kwa community, your community is no longer dependent on us or Katiwa droughts? Yes, I, I'll just give you a good example of uh, what NDMA did uh, in one Merti, for example, where you are saying, uh, which is actually Cielo North, and uh, we did a 25 kilometer uh, pipeline from a borehole which has a sweet water, mm. fresh water, mm. and uh, we took it up to 25 kilometers. Mm. 
and all the, the village along the way, around five settlements, they always used to be under constant water tracking, either by the county government or the partners. Mm. So we said, during the drought season, or even during normal season, what if we take off this element of water tracking mm. uh, or water support system? And so we say, we suppose we do a pipeline. So we did that 25 kilometer. Uh, for the last uh, two years, we are no longer water tracking that, but those particular communities. Mm. And those are some of the success stories. Same for areas where we, we supported irrigation uh, facilities. Uh, with the maybe a canal lining or you know piping community trainings, giving them the incentives and the seeds and creating opportunities for the youth mm -hmm. and working with them through the journey, you'll find that, that even they employ others, train others, and develop that skill, transfer that knowledge. So there are a lot of success stories out there, and if you see, uh, there's a lot of transformation going on. Mm -hmm. how many years? The, the borehole you said you it, used to it, pipe water. No, that, that, that's a permanent uh, facility. It's a permanent. Uh, we, what we did is that we usually, the Marty Aquifer along the uh, uh, Wasonero River mm. has a high potential, high yield uh, boreholes. So uh, that's, that is now opposed to when you do it maybe kilometers away, maybe 15, 20 kilometers away, mm. where the water yield is either very low or you'll find that uh, maybe it's, it's too saline. And uh, people are also very much interested in this uh, uh, fresh water for the utilization, for crop farming, for supporting their livestock. So it, it's a very long-term project, which I, th I think will stay for, for too many years. Mm. Great. So we'd like to take a short commercial break at this point. I should mention um, we have some uh, live studio audience in this town of Isiolo representing the north, talking about the impacts of climate change in the north of Kenya. You can join this conversation on social media. You can find me at Zain Wandati, Z-E-Y-N Wandati, at NTV Kenya. The hashtag to use is Earthwise, and we will sample some of your feedback. You can also post your questions there, and you can put your, the questions to our panel of experts here. I'm sure they'll be happy to take some of them, but we'll be right back after this break. Do not go away. Blackheads. Trigonia's pure active 3 in 1 charcoal, powered by salicylic acid and purified charcoal to reduce pimple causing germs by 99.5%. One product, three uses for a pure skin. Garnier pure active 3 in 1 charcoal, number one in South Africa, by Garnier naturally. We asked the children, how many of you brushed this morning? And this little boy, his hand didn't go up. And I said, well, why didn't you brush this morning? He said, my brother was using the toothbrush. If I'd waited for him, I would have been late for school. I'm sorry, I get a bit emotional when, when it comes to that. To be able to change a child's life, to be able to bring back that confidence about their smile, for me, is phenomenal. For me, Kijipa, Mimi Nani. Now it's time to get extreme eyes fresh. Ukiwa fresh all day, una stay fresh all night. Niki step onto the sea, and Niki on a bank team, Shajua Rada. On a bro, be a boss man, be your own man. Juki or your own man, una graffiti, no one smell even better. Be your own man with new Vassman Extreme Eyes. I'm back and I'm ready to get my cracked heels taken care of. This is what supports you mm. uh, when you're walking. So in most cases, if uh, you have an infection on your needles, just imagine how you've been walking. So it's very painful and uh, it can even cause a blood infection. So remember, this is an open cut that you are exposed to and oh, that wow. can also infect you, your blood. Okay. So it's very important for you to be able to treat that before it gets worse. Right. And then also imagine of a scenario where when you wear maybe closed shoes, they even smell in because of that. Oh, so that can also cause smells? Yeah, it can okay. also cause seeds if you okay. have an infection. 
shield your families from germs. When dental is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness causing germs. Everyday use of dental keeps my loved ones protected. Welcome back. We are live in Isiolo County. If you're just joining us, we're live in Isiolo County talking about climate change and climate action in Kenya's arid north. And in the first half of this discussion, we've set the scene, talked about some of the things that are being implemented on the ground, whether reducing the number of livestock could be a solution for this arid north. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about desertification, Omar, if I may start with you. Desertification is a... Is an, is a major concern, particularly in the, uh, in the northern part of the, of the country. The Sahara Desert itself is already moving uh, downwards, and the Great, great Green Wall of Africa is, is supposed to be trying to stop that. How are you seeing desertification playing out in Kenya? Because you traverse the country a lot in your work. Yeah, th thank you. It's true um, that desertification is a serious uh, issue, um, and it is as a result of combination of factors. Again, there is human activity, uh, because of the livelihood issues and poverty, a lot of people have turned into forest and uh, scrub, shrubland to cut trees, burn charcoal, uh, sell trees for timber. Mm. And uh, uh, these trees, they have taken many years to grow. And uh, the interesting thing is that these trees are stored in a lot of carbon. Mm. And th that's where actually the issue of climate change comes in. What trees do is that they release uh, oxygen and uh, absorb the carbon and uh, most of these trees, they are sitting on tons and tons of carbon, mm. which if released into the atmosphere, when you kill a tree, and uh, that carbon is, uh, gases are released into the atmosphere, they, you know, create uh, that issue of uh, greenhouse uh, gases and climate change. Mm. And uh, so they, it's like we're we are digging uh, the hole that we're in already too, too deep. Mm. And uh, this desertification also increases as a result of, again, lack of uh, actually restoration programming mm. um, and uh, actually uh, prolonged drought. Again, sometimes, sometimes trees die and then there's no uh, kind of replacement. And then expansion, uh, human activities and settlements uh, also contribute to this, as well as other uh, human activity, including you know, construction of roads, airports, uh, large infrastructure like irrigation. So these things also contribute in a way. So it's true that the desertification is expanding and we need to act now with the agency, mm. as my colleague said. And uh, it involves now having, uh, in, here in Silo for our case now, we have put in place uh, uh, restoration mechanisms to ensure that communities involve themselves in restoring landscape, mm. rangeland restoration, receding of you know, areas where maybe the, the land has been degraded, uh, you know, uh, coming with the technologies and in innovative ways actually to reduce uh, soil erosion, mm. uh, flood control, all these things, investment if done well, and then actually um, uh, seed banking, uh, transfer of you know, knowledge using um, technologies to ensure that uh, f fast growing trees and, and, uh, and, and shrubs are also uh, you know, taken across the, the, the desert to control the, 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 the desert is actually the expanding. So that's what we are doing currently. I visited a place, uh, I think it's called Markadaka once, and the farmer I had visited at the time, he was a livestock farmer, and I think it was during drought, and his livestock was very much emaciated. And where he was living, desertification was happening, such that he told us he'd lost two sheds, two livestock sheds, because it had been buried by the sand. And the sand was so fine, very fine. In such areas where the sand is already almost desert sand, how do you restore? Yeah, uh, thank you again. Uh, that's where now the issue of uh, restoration comes in, uh, of degraded uh, land. And uh, actually, it takes a lot of effort to have the, the nutrient that was required actually to support, uh, you know, uh, plants uh, in those particular areas. Mm. And uh, I think what people are doing is actually to take one uh, drought-resistant uh, crops, mm. which can actually require very little water, very little nutri nutrient to come up, mm. and make some canopy cover, some sort of. Mm. And then after that now, the land has its own way 
of regenerating itself. And uh, uh, once the, the, those steps are taken, I think they always is that way, you know, the land has its own way of regenerating itself. Mm. And again, we need to have uh, to, to put in place what we are doing here in Celo mm. is we are putting in place what is called grazing plants, community grazing plants, mm. whereby if a place is so much degraded, uh, it's left to recover itself because uh, erosion and, you know, water, these floods bring a lot of uh, uh, seeds and uh, other elements and nutrients from other places and they cover. Mm. Once, you know, there's no too much movement of livestock. Mm. That land has its own way of recovering itself and uh, mm. regenerating again. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Dida, picking up from there, are there parts of the county that have been able to be reclaimed from desertification? Uh, yes. Uh, majorly the rangelands mm. in this case. And the rangelands in Isolo County uh, basically have really been uh, uh, rehabilitated also of some sort mm. by one with county support, but majorly by the NRT or the Northern Rangeland Trust, mm -hmm. whereby they've uh, been able to liaise or work closely with the community mm -hmm. through a carbon uh, project mm -hmm. or carbon trading project. Mm -hmm. How they've done this is, uh, first of all, the rangelands, they have conservancies in all, almost six out of 10 wards in Isiolo County. So they've slowly linked up with communities uh, through AGM meetings, and they brought up the farmers, especially the livestock farmers and the herders that were, you know, just using the traditional methods of farming, yeah. brought them on board, educated them, the importance of receding some of these grazing grounds, the importance of uh, uh, grazing some of these animals during the wet season, and reducing the intensity of uh, the grazing of the animals during the dry season. Mm -hmm. And by doing this, they were able to reclaim some of these rangelands. Mm -hmm. um, and up to some point that uh, there's also the, uh, the incentive of the carbon trading. Mm -hmm. So the community has uh, a stake in it. Mm -hmm. So they are very They're cooperative in this credits. case. Yeah, and it has actually been one of the success stories on the ground. And is that money good money? Sorry? The money that they're making from the carbon trading, is it good money? Yes, yes. It's actually, you know, uh, calculated in terms of the, they have a certain score that they use a mathematical formula mm. to convert it into money. Mm. And uh, the more carbon credits you earn, uh, the likelihood for you to earn more money mm. in the community. They have a, a, a um, sort of a, a point system called a VER, mm. which they use. So there's, uh, there's co-sharing of the profits in that the investors have not yet been bought out. They have 40% stake. Mm. Uh, community has 60% stake. Mm. And out of the 60%, community has actually been quite um, uh, cooperative with the local government or the county government mm. in that they're willfully giving up 5% of these stakes to the county government. Uh, around three days ago, uh, the NRT presented a 10 million check yeah. uh, to the county government. That's out of that 5% that the community is giving back to the county government. Mm. And in this way, they're able to cater for things like bursaries, you know, mm. um, increasing the water points or things like boreholes and water pans, mm. rehabilitation of springs. Mm. So the, the um, the, the local county government, we are just waiting on the national legislative framework to be in place on carbon trading. Mm. And uh, once it's up and running, we trickle it down, whereby we also have our own framework mm. um, derived from the national fr legislative framework. And from that, we'll also be able to adopt some of these uh, techniques that NRT has done. And we do that okay. at, on a larger scale. Okay, so yeah. before I release you, um, Isiolo is among the first counties in the country to have had a climate fund even before the Flocka, uh, the Flocka program came into the country. Isiolo was, um, I think the, the, the initial counties were about four. Uh, there was Isiolo, Makueni, and two others that had a climate fund. When you look at what the climate fund was able to do then and what you're trying to implement here with Flocka, how do they compare? Uh, have you been able to move projects from that time to see them grow to the point that they, lo they no longer need support, they can stand on their own? And what lessons would you like the rest of the counties in the north to learn from you? So basically, Zainab, a lot of the work that was done uh, prior to the Flocka project was more of policy and framework or legislation at the level of the county, uh, sensitization of the community, a lot of public participation, 
And at the same time also sensitizing the county assembly in terms of adoption of some of these policies. Uh, to the County Climate uh, 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 Fund Act of 2018, you are right, you are one of the first counties. If they're not the second, we might be the third. Uh, that was adopted in 2018. And uh, part of the um, uh, legislative legislation that, has, that was passed in that act is that 2% uh, of our annual developmental budget be set aside in uh, mitigating uh, the adverse effects of climate uh, change. And this has been already been materialized, whereby um, as of this year, uh, that 2% has been factored in our budget, mm -hmm. and it's already in store. And uh, that acts as a matching fund to come hand in hand with the Flocker grant that is yet to be released from Treasury. We're expecting that soon. So these two together becomes a synergistic sort of an effort whereby the county is putting, uh, it's showing the goodwill by putting in the 2% of the budget, which is enshrined in the Isolo County uh, Climate Change uh, Fund Act. And then the Flocker uh, uh, grant comes in with the larger part of the grant. Mm -hmm. So these, uh, some of these uh, projects that we had discussed earlier in terms of the livestock, the water, the agriculture, it's going to be used across all the 10 wards uh, in, uh, in realization of some of these projects. Yeah. Okay, Grace. Kama mwanamke asili wa hapa, ni knowledge gani ambayo unaweza sema ile knowledge ya kitamaduni, knowledge ya kiasili ambayo inaweza tumika kuweza kuchangia kutatua ili shida la mabadiliko ya tabia nchi? indigenous knowledge ambayo ninaweza kusema uh, kitambo kabla maybe technology ijakuja mm. tumekuwa na wazee ambao walikuwa wanaweza kuangalia jambo ikiwa kabla ijatendeka mm. kuna wazee ambao ni wakiasili wanaenda kuangalia wanachinja mbuzi wanaangalia mara ya mbuzi mm. na wanasoma wanasema kwamba kuna mvua Mm. wakati fulani na je wakati huu hakuna kuna mvua ama hakuna mvua mm. na pia wanaweza kusema kwamba tunaona kwamba kuna ngombe nyingi zinaweza kukufa so mm. wangi, wanaweza kusema kwamba uh, tufanye hii wakati huu tusifanye hii wakati huu kwa sababu wakati huo pia kulikuwa na miti ambazo haingeweza kukatwa mm. wanasema kwamba labda kuna mvua imekosa kwa sababu miti zingine ambazo zilikuwa za kiasili mmeweza kumaliza mm. so wanaweza kuwa wanapeana knowledge ambayo ni ya kiasili pia kuna uh, njia zingine unaweza kuona hata kama ni ndege unaweza kuona hata kama ni ngombe kuna njia nyingi ya kiasili lakini moja ile mimi ninajua na tumeweza kufanya juzi kwa sababu tulikuwa na project ya indigenous people uh, seventh generation for indigenous knowledge ni hiyo ya kuweza kuchinja na kuangalia. Hiyo hmm. yeah. hiyo kuchinja nimesikia hata pia kuna community baringo ambao wanafanya hivyo. Yeah. Wanachinja na wanasoma wanaweza kuweza kutabiri hali ya hewa. Hiyo indigenous knowledge yeah. unaona ikitumika vipi na mipango ambayo Dr. Zena baba amesema mipango ambayo county inaweka ili kuhakikisha kwa imeweza ku build ile resilience ya community. Unaona hiyo indigenous knowledge ikitumika hapo? Uh, enough ninaona kwamba ikiintegratiwa na ile knowledge tuko nayo sasa ya technology mm -hmm. uh, wale wazee ambaye ni wazee wa kiazili wana ile knowledge ile knowledge iweze kuja kutumika pamoja na wale ambaye wako na technology ya saa hii mm -hmm. waweze kupeana ile information mm -hmm. kwa sababu ile information ya indigenous tunaona kwamba inafanya kazi mpaka leo saa zingine wanasema afadhali ile ya indigenous kuliko hii nyingine una mvua mvua inanyesha na bado mvua itaweza kunyesha lakini wakiintegrate yote mbili itaweza kufanya kazi kwa pamoja mradi mm -hmm. nyinyi kama vijana the young people you've said you do a lot of poems you do a lot of uh, of uh, youth engagement but is there something specific like a specific climate action that you would say you as the young people are driving this and are championing this as our way of building our own resilience as the young people uh, to climate change uh, yes uh, i think apart from advocacy we have a lot of young people who are active in actual measures that uh, influence uh, or rather champion for uh, practical methods of fighting climate change. For example, we have uh, a lot of young people here in Isiolo who are educated in methods like hydroponics, uh, kitchen gardening, mm. and they have put these methods in practice and we have seen a lot of uh, improvement in, in their ability to adapt and and to be resilient to this issue on climate change. 
We also have a number of initiatives uh, with schools. We do work closely with clubs so that we can nurture the young people from a young age. wachanga, and they grow with that knowledge. It's easier for them to adapt uh, the knowledge into society. We also have a program that we run as EcoVista. It's called uh, One Child, One Tree. We come uh, and partner with, let's say, Kenya Forest uh, for the supply of trees. Then we, we take the trees to the schools. Yeah, so I can say that uh, young people here in Isiolo are uh, taking a very active role in in some, in some of these initiatives. Okay, Dr. Dida Murethi has mentioned something that I'd like to throw back to you. He's, he's talked about trees. Um, so I'd like to ask you, does climate action equal tree planting? Yes, because um, it's one of the two-pronged method of uh, dealing with climate action. Mm. So it's under mitigation. So how you, you can either deal with climate action through mitigation or ad adaptation. What we've been discussing so far is more of the adaptation techniques. Mm. But the mitigation, um, Kenya, we have two issues here. We are also trying to reach the net zero, whereby it's zero carbon emissions. Kenya's plan is to reach at least, reduce carbon emissions by 32% yes. come the year 2030. Mm. And you also have this presidential initiative under the State Department of uh, Environment, mm. whereby we uh, plan to build 15 billion trees, at least by 2030. Mm. So we are, uh, um, how basically it's going to succeed is uh, more planting trees means uh, increased, you know, trees consume carbon dioxide from the air. Mm. So we have increased carbon sequestration from the environment. And by that, reducing the uh, after effects of ozone destruction, ozone layer destruction. So it's not an immediate um, result-based action. We are not going to see it there and then. But in the long term, obviously, if we can achieve planting even half or a quarter of that presidential initiative, which has been actually trickled down to the counties, Ewasonyiro has its role. Um, we have our role as a county. Kenya Forestry Service has its role. So we are doing a concerted or synergistic effect uh, by coming together, all of us, and you know, sensitizing the community. That's the most important part, not just only uh, planting these trees, but also growing these trees by nurturing these trees uh, um, uh, in that we, if, you know, in drier areas, you can put up an, an irrigation scheme that can enable uh, these trees to be nurtured to fruition. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Omar, uh, how do you incorporate indigenous knowledge in the work you do? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, indigenous knowledge is very important uh, to us for, for planning and also for it will enhance dissemination of this uh, information and also forecasting. Uh, we take part actually in enhancing and ensuring that this indigenous knowledge also informs mm. the scientific uh, data. Mm. Uh, we have been doing and working with a lot of um, uh, rural-based communities to come and actually uh, uh, demonstrate how they used to do their early warning forecast in terms of uh, drought, mm. uh, issues of flood, issues of rain, and all those things. And uh, they have actually now is actually document those knowledge ensure that it is sustainable. It informs the, the early warning and the scientific process, mm. and also do uh, comparative studies of how effective it can, it can be. And uh, uh, a number of issues actually which they mentioned, uh, ranging from, you know, solotrina goat and checking the intestine, and uh, you know, uh, maybe sometimes they'll, they'll t tell you maybe uh, some parts of the season, you'll find maybe the, the he goat making maybe certain noise in the middle of the night, all those things are informed by the weather at the end of the day. Mm. These animals respond to the weather. And that's how actually these guys mm. have actually done this uh, traditional knowledge and transferred it over the generation. Mm. So uh, it informs the process and also, also it helps us to incorporate the scientific knowledge and, and, and make sure that when we're doing the common planning, whether it is you know, response pro programming, whether it is resilience programming, mm. where, or any other intervention, mm. they are able to actually uh, absorb these two knowledges together and build synergy in a manner that's actually 
they complement each other so, mm. so that what we are doing and we are documenting the same unajua nimekuuliza hilo swali kwa sababu kuna wakati ambapo utapata watu wanakuambia eh wakiambia experts sasa wewe ndio expert umeenda kwa community wakiambia expert hapana sisi tungependa hivi expert anaambia wewe tulia mimi ndo najua mimi ndo expert mimi ndo najua kwa hivyo hakuna wakati umegombana na na watu kwa ground kwa wewe ndo expert wewe ndo najua I, I think over time uh, what the Kenya government does and they have been doing uh, uh, during all the it's climate focused mm. uh, it is a very vigorous uh, climate uh, assessment uh, mm. and, and surveillance program mm. and uh, over the recent years let me say the last 10 15 years it has been as accurate as as anything else sometimes even to a day before it will mm. rain tomorrow afternoon mm. and that's always been the the, the case and uh, the communities actually have appreciated uh, the, the the scientific knowledge which is very critical because scientific knowledge uses uh, technology uh, to measure maybe the temperature of the sea uh, the w- speed of the wind those are the elements which it measures mm. and it informs this one and uh, over time there has been a great acceptance mm. when the government say there's going to be a nino Uh, probability of becoming a lino is almost all 90 95% in most cases mm. same for drought same for other uh, you know uh, climatic conditions and phenomenon mm. so there has been a lot of absorption of this knowledge initially you know people are informed by beliefs and traditions and uh, you know myth and other things but over time uh, the scientific knowledge and the process when they were taken through they are beginning to accept it as something which is actually accurate and uh, it's reliable and uh, that that's actually no one tells us these days mm. that uh, what the government is telling us about the condition mm. of the drought or the rain is mm. not true uh, yeah so there's a lot of absorption mm. of the truth that's coming uh, actually <laughs> through the the forecast okay grace you paid a uh, lot of attention to what he was saying kuna wakati wote ambao expert amekwambia wewe nyamaza mimi ndo expert mimi ndo najua wakati mwingine mtu akienda kusoma na sahau wakati unamweleza na kuambia hapana mm. uh, scientific inasema hivi ile indigenous imeisha lakini mimi nilikuwa nataka kusema kwamba tunaweza kuiweka indigenous na scientific knowledge pamoja na pia there is need for communication back uh, communicating the information kumbuka wale unaenda kuwa communicatea pia ni illiterate people hawataweza kwenda kusoma mm. lakini tukikuwa tunatumia kama kitamba kwa mfano wakati fulani tunasema kwamba kuna mvua tunaweka kitambaa ya green na watu wamefunzwa kwamba ile kitambaa ya green na manisha kuna mvua na nyazi itakuwa mingi kwa sababu sisi ni kuangalia mambo ya nyazi na malisho then ukiweka kitambaa ya green wanajua kwamba saa hizi ni kuzuri ukiweka kitambaa nyekundu wanajua kwamba ni hatari kama kuna mali ambayo wako nayo wanaweza kuuza nusu ama wanaweza kufencha kwa kazi zingine kama labda saa zingine kwa sababu mambo ya climate change pia inachangiwa pia na mambo inaleta pia conflict saa zingine hata kama ni wakati wa conflict ama kuna amani unaweza weka kitambaa nyeupe watu wanajua kwamba tuna amani ni naweza kutembea tembea hakuna shida kwa sababu labda parameters zote zimeweza kuwekwa ya kuzuia mambo ya amani so hiyo pia bado itakuwa ni scientific na indigenous kwa sababu imekutana pamoja na yule mama akipita aone bendera nyeupe ana amani ndani yake anajua ime communicate nini akiona bendera ya green a, anajua ime communicate nini so Uh, ndio nilikuwa ninajaribu kuangalia kwamba vile tunaweza kukutanisha hizi knowledge tusije kupigana kwa sababu kuna wakati wa kupigana na ile knowledge mimi yule mzee wa, wa kitambo wa nyumbani anaamini kile yeye mwenyewe anajua na anakuambia hii mambo yenu ya scientific ni uongo na nitakuproofu juzi mulisema nini mulisema juzi mvua inakuja na hakuna mvua na niliwaelezea hakuna mvua so inamaanisha tu ni kuketi wao watu wa scientific waelewe pia indigenous knowledge na waweze kutest wale pia wa indigenous knowledge waweze kuambua pia mambo yanaenda vile yanaenda waweze kwa keti pamoja hizo bendera umetaja kuna mali ambapo zinatumika sasa uh, kuna wakati eh, NPMA kitambo kuna wakati walikuwa wanakuja na project ambayo ilikuwa inaweza ku, ukienda tu unatembea unapata mali wameka eh, especially nilikuwa leparwa wakati fulani nikaona bendera ndio nikauliza kwa sababu hata mimi sikuwa ninajua ni ya nini nilikuwa ninazoea kujua bendera ya Kenya nikauliza hii bendera nyeupe ni nini tuka nikaelezewa nikaenda bendera green ni nini tuka sasa nilipokuwa nafuatilia zaidi nikajua kwamba ilikuwa ni communication watu walikuwa wanacommunicatewa ile information kwa sababu na nikaona ni vizuri kwa sababu yule mama akiwa shajua green ni nyasi basi uh, itakuwa mzuri lakini uh, of late sijaona sijui kama labda mwenzangu anaweza kuniambia kama bado inaendelea 
Mm, unajua kuna sehemu zingine za Kenya ambapo bendera za aina hizo zinahusika na uchawi. <laughs> <laughs> Zinahusishwa na uchawi ndio umesoma kuhusika na kufanya weather forecasting. At that point we take a very quick break and when we come back now we go into the conversations of where do we go from here now that we know what the problems are and what the teething problems are, are where do we go from here we'll be right back do not go away Infections, blackheads, Trigonia's pure active 3-in-1 charcoal, powered by salicylic acid and purified charcoal to reduce pimple causing germs by 99.5%. One product, three uses for a pure skin. Garnier Pure Active 3-in-1 charcoal, number one in South Africa, by Garnier Naturally. People come to me and they say they get discomfort when they have ice cream. Can you imagine that? Avoiding having cold ice cream. Sensodyne gives you long-lasting protections against sensitivity. And people come in and they're like, oh, it works. I can have ice cream and I'm not in any discomfort. I recommend Sensodyne because it works. It's brilliant. When your kids bond with you, you're giving them a great start. Prestige Magery. It all starts with a great start. Now comes in the original and vanilla flavor. This is the best serum I've ever used. 9 out of 10 agree Garnier Even and Matte Vitamin C Serum is the best they've used. Our highest concentration of derm actives. Made my skin tone more even. Brightens up my skin with an instant glow. Bye bye, dark marks. Even a Matte Vitamin C Serum. 9 out of 10 agree it's the best serum they've used by Garnier naturally. Although the cause of cervical cancer is not well understood, 99.7% is caused by the human papilloma virus. HPV is a sexually transmitted infection affecting 80% of all women by age 50 years. The National Cancer Institute is accelerating action towards elimination of cervical cancer to reach targets 90, 70, 90 by 2030 as per the recommendation of the World Health Organization, WHO. Take your girls aged 9 to 15 years for vaccination against HPV and screening is recommended for all women who are sexually active and targets those aged 25 to 40 Nine years. The National Cancer Institute Kenya towards a cancer free nation. This is NTV. Yajayo Katika NTV Juni. To go for the chairmanship of the African Union. Kinara wazimio asema yuko tayari kuchukua mikoba ya uongozi wa umoja wa mataifa Afrika. Akasema mimi nimesema nitagaramia kila kitu kama mtanisikiza but minus postmortem. Polisi wanachunguza kifo cha mwanamke aliyefariki kwa njia tatanishi na kisha jamaa za mpenziwe wakashinikiza maiti yake isifanyie uchunguzi. Last year I brought my baby here at 3 months. Niliteseka sana, the baby would stay in the staff room kwa meza, but for now, ke water have had our cry. Shule county ya kirinyaga za jenga viumba vya walimu wa kike, kwa nyonyeshea wanao wanapokuwa kazini. Na leo tunakuchambulia matukio ya wiki kupitia kikosi cha wahariri wa NMG kwenye sehemu pia kabisa ya mduara. Blackheads, 
Try Garnier's Pure Active 3-in-1 Charcoal, powered by salicylic acid and purified charcoal to reduce pimple-causing germs by 99.5%. One product, three uses for a pure skin. Garnier Pure Active 3-in-1 Charcoal, number one in South Africa, by Garnier Naturally. Grand Mega His life is in danger. This is horrible. Those poor people have to hide just to stay away from that snake. They took the case away from him. And what's worse, since they found no evidence, they closed the case. Don't you see how much you're breaking Mother's heart? You're getting rid of the name she gave us for the name of a man that you barely know. Oh, Natalia, what's wrong with you? You will always be the adopted one. Natalia, getting married is a very important step. Are you quite sure that this is what you really want? Of course. Head over heels. Prudential is now on M-Pesa app. Get a cancer cover from as low as 750 bob per month. Na pia, ukiwa admitted husi, unapata chapa daily for each day hauko hustle for as low as 1,250 bob per month. Welcome back. Now we're in the last few minutes of this conversation on climate change in the arid north and the solutions being implemented on the ground. Now in this last section, we'd like to take a few questions from our live studio audience. And there's a lady in front of me who I understand is a farmer. So just tell us a little bit uh, your name and uh, what your question is. Unaza uliza kwa kiswa ilipia? Pandisha, pandisha microphone. Kwa majina na ito amelumolo, natoko upanda wa mbura, swali yangu hile na uliza, ni ya kwamba kama sasa saa hii tuseme kuko na ukame saa hii ukiangalia ukame ile iko imeadhiri watu wengi sana kwa ajili unaangalia ta tuseme mandoko inatoka kwa msitu inakuja ku mpaka town unaona venye ina inaribu mimea ile tumemea kidogo unaona saa hii mtu hakuna maji unaona maji imekatika hatuna maji saa hii tunaona kuna ile simba inakula watu huko mburat Simba. Simba, eh. Kwa hata sayu kenda pa general, bibi na buwana wa kostali kwa jilu wa waiyo nini janga. Sasa tunaulisa serekali ni aji itawesa kukichangia. Ili tuwese kupata maji kwa jili tukipata maji, tutawesa kusonga mbele. Ya pili naulisa hivi. Kama kuseme mtu kama uyo, hameaviriwa. Na malipo yuwesi kukua unarivwa. Serekali imetu amulia aji. Ya tatu. Na ulisa hivi, mama kama uyo, kuseme ni mama kama mimi na mze wake. Watoto wao, mali wako, hana mtu wakuangalia. Serekali, inachangia nini kuhusu hiyo familia. Kwa jili ni familia ambaye ni maskini. Awana mbele wala nyuma. Hile mifuko tulikuwa tunachangia. Pale mbele, tunasema na shika mbuzi. Chiangasi likuja ikamaliza yote. Kama sasa kaunji ya isiolo, tunauliza vile itawesa kutusaidia. Wakulima hili tuwese kupata maji. Si tukipata maji ya tunashida. Maji. Eee. Sawa, sawa. Lakini kulingana na kila ime kichenji. Kine kuko saa hiu. Tunangalianga vile mwenzangu pale alikuwa nasema. Si tukiangalia Mount Kenya tuwene ina mawingu. Tunajua ni kubaya. Mount Kenya? Mount Kenya. Kuna hile maswali ilikuwa inauliswa pale mbele ya kwamba hile unaenda unaangalia kama mbuzi tumechinja, tumeona mara inasema hivi na hivi. Ikikuja kupande hii, unaona hapa, inamanisha kitu fulani. Nae, kuna wengine nae, tunangalia, tukiona mauti Kenya ya imekauka, tunajua ni kubaya. Na uneza kuyona kutoka hapa? E, nikiu hapa naona mauti Kenya vizuri sana, na ina hata hile mawemi, sinuwe yake. Sasa ndiyo tunaulisa kama serekali ya isi olo, imejipanga hachi kusaidia 
wanakao ndio isiolo maji mbwa inanyesha mbwa inapita mm. maji inapita hapa mingi inaingia <laughs> Indian Ocean sasa mm. tunashangaa ni aji mpango wa serikali imekuwa mm. ni pesa hakuna mwani nini sawa sawa asante kuna kuna nyuma nishie microphone eh uh-huh. amjambo mimi kwa majina naitwa Joseph Kalapata uh, swali langu uh, ni kuhusiana na mambo ya climate change hmm. na mimi eh, kama kalapata nasema kwamba serikali wameshangia pakubwa hmm. serikali ya kitaifa wameshangia kuwa na janga la climate change katika insemi hmm. nasema hivyo kwa sababu eh, ukiangalia hmm. serikali kuu kama hivi majuzi eh, kama civil societies walienda kotini kusimamisha mambo ya logging mambo ya kukata mizitu zetu lakini wakati serikali ilipokuja wakaashiria sheria hiyo wakasema mizitu ikatwe mimi kama shahidi ya kuangalia vile mizitu ilikatwa baadaye vile ilikatwa Mount Kenya Forest niliudhika sana na nikaona serikali kuu ilishangia kwa madhara ya mizitu ndipo sasa situnaumia swali la pili ambaye sio sio swali pia sana ni kwamba serikali la kitaifa wakati walipokuwa wanafanya greening walikuwa wanajaribu ku introduce species ambayo inaweza kufanya ku green ardhi zetu mm. wali introduce mti inaitwa prosopis and julie flora mm. sisi hapa isiolo tunaita tunaita buskiti mjinga mm. wengine wanaita madenge mm. ukitembea sehemu size kama ya marti yani isiolo tembea baringo tembea tana river tembea garissa we need the government of Kenya to contribute in terms of either eradicating managing and removing the prosopis because that the major now contributor of the drainage of our our water our our rivers imekausha kila mali we are working on swali hebu nikuulize swali umesema serikali ya kitaifa inachangia usichukue microphone muuliza yeye swali ningependa yanijibu ni serikali, serikali ya kitaifa eh ndio nivyo umesema serikali ya kitaifa lakini wewe kama mwananchi wa nchi hii ni hatua zipi ambazo umechukua kuweza kujikinga na makali ya mabadiliko ya tabia nchi ama kuweza kubadilisha community ambayo unaishi kama mimi kama binafsi ama jamii ambayo inatoka tumejaribu sana kukinga hali hiyo kwa kujaribu kuondoa hiyo mti ambayo iliyopandwa ambaye inaitwa madenge. Mm. Okay. Asante. Okay. Uh, we'll take one one last question kabla turudi kwa kwanza tuwapatie nafasi ya kujibu. Kum eh uh, uh, mm. Naitwa Mary Stella Makesi. Mm. Mimi ni mwanaharakati. Swali langu laenda kwa CEO wetu Dida. Mm. E, ya kwamba mambo na climate change E, kwa women and youth ni nini unafanya kama mama wa kaunti hii wa CEO wa kaunti hii kuhusu mambo ya climate change about women and youth mm. kwa sababu most of them ndio wanakuwa affected sana kwa jamii kwa sababu lack of knowledge lack of um, eh anyway the lack of knowledge ni nini kama county government mnafanya ili mambo ya climate change kuhamasishwe ndio wajue kukaa ama vile mnaweza wasaidie ndio wasikuwa affected saidi haya yeah. asante acha tujibu acha tujibu au masali kwanza kabla turudi tutachuta kurudi round 2 uh, uh, dr zena dr dida <laughs> masali kwako ah yeah. mm. uh, asante kwa swali lako ah mm. uh, mama kweli mimi ni mama mwenzako na na nimepata hiyo hisia vile umesema hiyo kwa hisia kali uh, ningetaka kukujulisha na ningetaka kujulisha mama zetu wote kwa katika kaunti yetu tukufu ya Isiolo kwamba uh, katika mipango ama mikakati yenye tuko nayo katika kupunguza uh, hii uh, makali ya mabadiliko ya tabia nchi au climate change Uh, moja wapo ya ko, um, communities ama kipengele kimoja lenye lazima tutawajumuisha hasa kwa uhamasishaji 
wanawake watatusaidia sana kwa uhamasishaji e, kufunza kwa mama na mama unajua ndo uh, wana wa, mama ndo mwalimu wa boma so sisi tutafanya tuta kazi na nyinyi kwa 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 tutafanya kazi na nyinyi kwa undani zaidi um, to, to deal na women na youth tuwasaidie kwa mwanzo kwa katika uhamasishaji kufunza community maafa ya climate change na uh, kwa the second part tutawasaidia katika community project mtashikana kama mko na women groups youth groups tutafanya kazi na nyinyi uh, ambapo kama mngekuwa mko na kama CBOs ambao mnaweza mkapatiwa kitu kama uh, kazi ya kwenda kufanya tree planting unaona mm. na nyinyi ndo ambao mtakuwa kama ambassadors wetu kwa community kwenda kufunza wa mama zetu na pia the youths Mm. Na si wa mama na youth peke yake. There's also a role ya persons with disabilities msisahau. Mm. So all that tuta consider. Msikwe mm. na wasiwasi. Mm. Uh, Dr. Ah. Dida there's also the question about human wildlife conflict. I don't know who um, you're the one. Okay. Yeah, thank you uh, mama. Hiyo ni swali mzuri sana. Um ni kweli kuna a lot of human wildlife conflict. Na uh, leongea mambo ya Simba lakini kuna pia a lot of uh, elephants ambayo huwa inaingia kwa mashamba inaharibu hiyo mm. uh, ni kweli inakuanga mm. uh, but what has been happening is that we have as humans we have been because of the expanding population we have been encroaching into the ecosystem mm. and uh, this livestock i mean wildlife uh, are our assets ni rasmali ya Kenya tusione na adui kwanza hiyo ni kitu muhimu ambaye inawahimiza kwanza hii ni resource ya ya inji hii ndio inatuvutia utalii inajenga inji inatuletea hiyo dola ambaye inatakana inapatia hii pesa yetu dhamana ile ile inafaa kukua bila kukua na hizo tourist na hatuizi pata hiyo madola so kuna vile hii wildlife inatusaidia sana so tusione kwanza ile kitu na, na wasihi kabisa tusione hiyo wildlife ni adui hmm. tuone tujue tukwe na mbinu mbadala ya kujua vile tutaishi na communities actually they have been actually very uh, respectful to the wildlife they are seen it as their resources uh, uh, down there in the north there used to be elephants but the, you cannot today find an elephant and uh, a lot of time we find our children we take to these parks mm. just to see because uh, they have actually finished those uh, killed and finished those life i mean wildlife mm. so the same should not be happening here mm. those assets are very important and they are part of our ecosystem uh, what we are doing we are actually working and coordinating well with the, the wildlife department mm. and most of the time they react very fast to make sure that the, even in Nairobi National Park everywhere, whenever there is uh, actually uh, uh, um, uh, maybe a, a lion or uh, an elephant that has actually left, they have corridors which they pass through, mm -hmm. they act very fast and they mobilize themselves and they make sure that that animal returns. Mm -hmm. That's why you rarely hear any incidents of life, uh, wildlife maybe killing a uh, human or, but sometimes they do some destruction. So Paulin Sana will we also uh, they have also been doing a lot of sensitization they have been providing water facilities for this animal inside the park, the park. Mm. yeah so that's actually one thing and uh, uh, the other thing what, which they have been doing is actually they have been doing a lot of uh, community trainings community mobilization uh, Burat, where you come from uh, actually uh, there's a lot of new intervention which are going on mm. including uh, you know this uh, what do you call the, the springs which have been protected even in DMA Mm. It's doing tanks there to make sure that there's irrigation. So there's a lot of library support programs uh, within the world. So we'll support you, we'll work with you, and uh, I think it's going to be good. Okay. Muraidi, kabla turudi labda kwa audience, ngependa kujua, what is your ask as young people? Uh, thank you so much. I think, first of all, we need to invest more on adaptation. So there's an urgent need for the government and all the partners to increase uh, finances that will help us adapt more. Uh, finances uh, in risk management, we need more money uh, for water projects, we need more money for forestry. We also, uh, as young people, we come up with a lot of innovative ideas and most young people don't know where to channel 
uh, their energy. So a lot of education will also help a lot uh, in getting young people to understand the need uh, to participate um, in initiatives that uh, uh, grow our resilience as a community yeah. to, to climate change. We also uh, need to plan a, a lot on risk and the vulnerability of our communities. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I have a friend of mine who told me, you cannot uh, liberate a community if you cannot teach them how to feed themselves. So we need to invest more on teaching them and also giving them access to resources that will enable them to achieve some of the, prog uh, the programs and, and initiatives that they do have. Have you tried to engage the county? Uh, we have tried to engage the county, yes. Uh, I can say that uh, partly they have uh, done a good job, but there is more that there needs to be done mm. uh, in terms of where we need to go. Because the distance uh, from where we stand to the desired place that we want to get to it's still uh, very long. Needs a lot of effort mm -hmm. and uh, a sense of urgency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Grace, labda tu nikupenda sekunde thalathini vuni ambie tu kitoka hapa. Nini ni unge penda tu kumbuke? Uh, kitu ya kwanza uh, ni conversation ni ambaye tuna tu kona yosa isi mm -hmm. na kutoka hapo tu chukue action isi je kuwa tu tu me discuss mm -hmm. tu kakosa action. Lakini nataka kusema jambo ambaye kalapata alisema. Uh, kuna project zingine ambazo uh, NGO sama serikali zinakuja nazo kwa community lakini haikuanga na ile free prior and informed consent kwa sababu ya ile project ukiangalia kwa mfano ngaremara uh, the whole of ngaremara inaondoka sasa kwa sababu hiyo in fisher species hiyo madenge imeweza kumaliza mm. na unaona kwamba hata sasa tunaogopa kwa sababu kuna hiyo floka project inakuja mm. na inaweza kuja na uh, maybe mitigation measures ya kwamba kuna miti tunaweza kupanda. Yeah. Lakini unapata sasa watu wanasema ile miti unapanda ama ni kama ile madhenge ya Ngaremara. So inastahili kwamba hata wakati uh, miti hizi zinakuja kupandwa, lazima tufanyie research. Hii miti inaleta madha, italeta madhara gani baadaye. Kwa hivyo yale mimi nataka tu kusema ni kwamba uh, mambo ya climate change ni real, ime to affect, lakini lazima tuchukue action kwa sasa ili tuweze kuzuia. Aya, sawa, sawa. Lazima tufungie hapo kwa sababu tarifa ya bari naanza hivi karibuni na ni lazima tuondoke ili ku, ku, to make room for the news bulletin. Thank you very much for participating in these discussions physically here. We will continue a little bit longer when we get off air. My name is Zena Bwandacha, I've been your host tonight. Thank you very much for our audience. NTV Gioni will be right up. Do not go away. <laughs>